All right, and take three. Hey everyone, it is Friday, March 4th. The time right now is 1.30 p.m., at least according to that clock. And the temperature is around one degree Celsius. And I'm here in the distillery district. And this is located in the southeast end of downtown. And for this one, I'll be heading over to Parliament Street as I just crunched on some ice there. I'm going to head south down to Queens Key. And then I'll walk west through the future Queens or Keyside neighborhood. Spelled Q U A Y S I D E. So I have to resist temptation to call it Quayside. It's actually Keyside. Or at least that's how I think it'll be pronounced. And that's a new development that the city just recently announced some new plans for. As I suddenly find myself walking into a pretty good wind here. And you can see some of the towers in the financial district off in the distance there. And I mentioned this was take three. As the last few times I tried to record this, my camera started to act up. So hopefully it holds up from here on. And there's a look into the distillery district. And I think it would be best to cross over the west side of Parliament Street here. That's a look north up Parliament. That would be Parliament Square Park just on the other side there. And now it's south on Parliament. So where I'm headed is a former industrial area. And up until two years ago, there was a master community planned by Google's parent company, Alphabet, for the area. And their idea was to build a small urban community within Toronto. And they're building it as a more sustainable and affordable neighborhood. It would have taken up to, or it would have taken up about 12 acres of land and included a number of technological innovations. But with that also came some heavy privacy concerns in terms of data collection on its residents and that sort of thing. It was also felt that Google was leaning too heavily on the taxpayer. So around the start of the pandemic, Google pulled the plug. There's a look back at the distillery district. 
And I think the original plans included mostly timber buildings. That was part of their sustainability promise. And there's a look west along Longboat Avenue. And that's the first street I lived on when I moved downtown. And that was back in the early 2000s. And we'll be heading under the rail tracks here and the Gardner Expressway. So this here would be the northern border of Keyside. And to the west it's bordered by a street called Bonnie Castle. And there's some old soy mills over there. I think they're the Victory Soy Mills. And that's roughly the eastern border of the project. Hey, look at that, a walk sign. So we are now in Keyside. So it's to include the area around the soy mills and some of that area which was previously used as a dock and it looks like it still is for a number of cruise ships or cruise ferries to be more specific. So it's mostly that plot of land over there and starting here heading west north of Queens Key here and bordered by the highway there to the north where the development will go in. And this building was previously occupied by Google. And now it's a budget car and truck rental. And you can see there's already a number of condos going in, including Aqualuna straight ahead to the south of Queens Key. And this development's to feature a number of buildings and towers designed by notable architects. And there will be timber buildings as well. And there'll be a number of parks and even an urban farm. So all these old commercial and industrial buildings on the right here are going to be cleared out. And that looks like a timber-based structure there. You don't see that too often. And one thing you don't see on Queens Key East here that you do find on Queens Key West are streetcars. And it's my understanding that the TTC is reviewing a plan right now to put an LRT or streetcars along this section of Queens Key. And I think it would start at Union Station and then it would head south down to Young and Queens Key and then it would run along this section all the way over to Cherry Street and then up to the Cherry Street Loop. And that's a streetcar loop that services the 504 King Streetcar. So 
I think they're calling that neighborhood to the south Bayside. side. And other than the businesses that call these buildings home, I don't think anyone's really going to miss these things. So what I'll do is if I remember to, I'll put a link to a blog TO article that they ran on this proposed development that is currently in the approval process with the city. And there's a number of artist renderings of what it'll supposedly look like. Usually those renderings are a bit ambitious, but they do look quite fantastic. And this here is Bonnie Castle Street. So I'm just going to head north here up to Lakeshore. And apparently there's going to be a major use multi-arts venue. Major use multi-arts venue? Is that how you would say it? Well, there'll be a large venue put in here as well. That should be a draw. And this building on the left is quite unique. This is a condo that was designed by the same gentleman behind Habitat 67 in Montreal. And you can see the resemblance. And forgive me if I pronounce his name wrong, but I believe that's Moshe Safdie. Now, if only they would bury the gardener here or just knock it down completely. This area could be stitched back to the area just to the north. Well, there would also be the rail tracks to deal with. But there's a look along the north side of Keyside. And there's a Porsche dealership just over there. And straight ahead, you can see the new CIBC Square Towers conveniently blocking the CN Tower. And I am standing on a Green Street pilot project. It doesn't quite look like the picture. I don't see the lady jogging. Or the guy with an umbrella. Or flowers. Or that electric car. This is Lower Sherburn Street straight ahead. And just north of Front Street, it just becomes regular Sherburn Street. And there's another big condo project going in there. That one is called Lakeside.
It's definitely a windy one today. And just to the north is Sherburne Commons Park. And it looks like there's an ice rink there. And there's the neat waterfront promenade you can walk along and that'll take you past Sugar Beach. And we're back to Queens Key East. And there's a 72 bus. And that services Queens Key and Commissioner's Road. And then it'll head north up to Pape Station. And there's a George Brown College just to the south of here, along with Course Entertainment. That's a large media conglomerate. And I imagine this parking lot will be here much longer. That's unique. That's a plan to insert a road. I was expecting it to be a building announcement. These buildings to the left have just recently been completed. And there's Red Path Sugar off in the distance. And just north of there, you'll find Sugar Beach. It's just a man-made beach with no access to the lake. And this building here, I believe, is Artscape Daniels. And there used to be a large entertainment complex here, right on this corner. That was the government. It was also known as RPM. And there's a secondary club there called the Cool House. That operated from around 84 to 2015.
is Lower Jarvis Street, and there's a look north up Lower Jarvis. And like Sherburn, north of Front Street, that just becomes Jarvis. And the big Loblaws. Which, when they built it, I'm sure they weren't thinking this would be such a hotbed of construction, but it's since become one. So I wonder if there's pressure to put a tower on this lot as well, even though it's not that old. I think it opened in the early 2000s. Looks like there's a pickup truck with some, or rather, a Ukrainian flag on it. As those tragic events continue to unfold. And there's a look towards Sugar Beach. I've been down that way a number of times before. And that is the Oak Glen. You can often see them loading sugar onto these things. And given the emphasis the city's putting on developing this area, it's kind of disappointing to see new buildings like this one go in. And I think that'll be the future home of the LCBO headquarters. Really looks kind of like a Toronto special right there. Just a boring glass box. I think it's called the Sugar Wharf Tower. Even the way it meets the street is pretty blah. Just a glass curtain. There's a look into the Red Path Sugar Refinery. And that company has been around since the mid 1800s. And I think this facility was built in the 1950s. They previously did their work in Montreal before that. And there's even a museum in here, which hopefully is reopened. That is part of the pinnacle development just there. You never know whether, you never know whether. And there'll be three rather tall residential towers there. Of 95, 80, and 65 stories. And what a unique view of the tower this is, kind of peeking right between those condos. Including what will at least be one of the two tallest residential buildings in the country and the city. It's still not quite clear if One Blue or West will be taller or not. 
think both projects might have some last minute proposed minor height increases in store to try to outdo one another. And the old Toronto Star building there, I think, will be getting reclad and it'll see a height extension. And here's one of my favorite projects along the waterfront. And this would be Pier 27. And the main tower here is just 35 stories. Although, looks like they're trying to wedge a 40 story tower here. And there's some notices from both the Toronto District School Board and the Toronto Catholic School Board saying, hey, if you move here, we can't promise we'll have room in nearby schools for your kids. So they might be commuting to an out-of-area school. And as cool as this presentation center is, I certainly hope this part of Queen Ski here gets redeveloped. This is kind of a waste. It's not really a park. It doesn't provide any retail. So perhaps with that proposed development, this is the last key to the puzzle here, or piece of the puzzle. And you also get a pretty neat view of the waterfront down here. Let's go take a look. just walk through here along the waterfront promenade and then that'll kick me out at Young and Queen's Key. I've live streamed through here somewhat recently, but I can't remember the last time I recorded a regular video here. And I can't say I'm too fond of this art here. Not that I'm particularly qualified to talk about art. Looks kind of like they spent all their budget on that first piece. And then just squished all the scraps together to make these remaining three pieces. Or maybe the idea was these are all collapsed versions of that. I don't know. But that looks pretty cool. That, not so much, at least in my opinion. And it's Lake Ontario. And you can see the Portlands. That's also home to a big redevelopment plan just off to the east here. And the Toronto Islands to the north, to the north, to the south. And the Island Airport off in the distance. see on my display here if I have that plane in frame or not that's going in for a landing. And 
there's a look at the Weston Harbor. And here's where Captain John's used to be docked. That was a restaurant set up on a rather old dilapidated ship. And it stayed here for a very long time before it was somewhat recently shut down. And in the warmer months, this area is usually bustling full of private taxis taking you back and forth from the island. Well, they take you to the island and you're on your own coming back, but you can board the city ferry. And this fence is new. This used to just kind of be a sudden drop off. Well, fortunately, there's a lot of salt on that ice there to give it some grip. In this area, south of Front Street is known as the South Core. That's witnessed an explosion in development in recent years. Used to be those two brown and green towers along with the Western Harbor Castle. And those condos there were pretty much all that stuck out down here. There's a crane as part of the Pinnacle development, and that's a look north up Young Street. So now I have left Queens Key East, and I'm on Queens Key West here. And on that note, I think that is all for this video. So I hope you enjoyed this walk through the future Keyside development along with Queens Key East. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below if you wish to support the channel. There's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership in the description. I also have an Instagram account at Johnny Strides. I think what I'd, I'm going to do here is walk north up to maybe Union Station. I'm going to pop into the food court and grab some lunch and I'm going to record that walk. I'll be playing that back on a live stream I have later tonight. Anyways, stay warm, stay safe. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.